Hello friends, welcome to my video. In this video, we'll see uh, all the details of the shared preference variable in our Android app. So we'll learn how to create, retrieve, or delete the shared preference variable and using the Android Studio as a tutorial. So let's begin. We'll create a new project. Uh, I'll keep this project as empty activity. Click next. And I can name this app painting. It's probably shared preference app you can name it anything i'll repeat click finish wait for the environment to load it may take a while once the environment loads uh, i think first i will do is i'll uh, start the emulator also in parallel so that yeah we can run this app in emulator and also uh, first and foremost i'll make the layout uh, for this app so i don't think i need the project folder to be visible so i can just minimize that bring this as a bigger i think i like to use the default uh, text view what we get i'll just make the size a little bigger and give it some id probably text view id and what else and i will need few buttons uh, one will be probably to put and then get so probably okay what i can do is also i can put a plain text which will take the message or the text the string form which has to be put in the um, shared preference variable so I'll just try to be quick with the layout but it will take some time so I'm giving it some ID of person factor and I've given the constraints and that's I, I think I'll remove the name uh, the text and I'll give it some hints instead so if you scroll down over here hints so enter shared preferences text so whatever we enter that we will probably like to put uh, in the variable so shared preference is nothing but it is shared or it is stored as a kind of database in the app and it can be reused when the app is restarted i'll show uh, uh, these features so first button could be put then the second button could be to retrieve the uh, data which is stored in this so i can set it as get or get or setter i should have put as instead of put set but never realize it doesn't matter i can bring it probably a little bit up and then i can put another few buttons one could be probably delete or delete all like it will delete all the variables which all are stored so i'll probably create a couple of variables and other could be delete just delete a specific variable yeah delete and i'll give some constraints so that's all from layout perspective. Uh, I'll quickly create four uh, public void method which I'll associate with the uh, four buttons. So one will be for button put view view, and I'll just probably copy paste. Let's see, we, yeah. So the second one could be get then third method could be instead of put delete all and the last could be delete which will delete a specific variable and but we will leave the other one so once we have it we will go back to the layout quickly and associate these four functions with the four buttons so if i scroll down in the on click attributes so this one is delete so i'll associate it with the delete then I'll select the delete all button and delete all button method. Get will get associated with the getter over here and put will get associated with the put. So that's a naming is important so so that not to confuse. So try to put some uh, give na some names which you can easily identify when you are doing it in layout or you can even put on click listener here but either is fine. If you notice the color of the methods have changed from gray to blue, so that means they are being linked or associated somewhere that they are being triggered. Okay, uh, further, what we'll do is we'll create few class variable. One will be for text view, and the other could be the edit text. Edit text. And in the on create method itself, I will assign or define these variables with the widgets in the layout perfect and this could be edit text 
that's why the id which we gave in the layout is very important okay so once we have it then we can move to our method implementation so more or less code is simple so first uh, in the put method we'll first create the variable called shared preference of type of course shared preference and then we will get the preference so use this and you have to choose the mode so there are different modes more private or public or whatever so i think the best will be to go with the private mode because it will keep the data local to your uh, environment local to your app and it cannot be accessed from outside okay so once you have it then what you can do is we can set the edit mode so you can just get the editor so i think it should have been capital s and editor and you can probably create any variable this should be of take the edit form of this one uh, and yeah so this variable will be in the edit mode and now we can use this editor to put or up, uh, update the variables inside this particular variable so but before doing anything i'll just first like to clear it so that it gets cleared and after that what we will do is it, it, that will make sure that if any previous values are there that will get it cleared and then i'll start putting the values one by one so we can put any data type string boolean float mean so i will go with the string type and this will be the variable name in the string preference so this probably i can put as string user data the name doesn't matter but make sure whatever you type if it's uh, the similar variable name you use other places and then the value of this will be will directly take it from the edit text box which is edit text dot get text dot to string and once we have it then we can or probably what we'll do is we'll also put another string as i told like we'll try to create multiple uh, variables so the other could be string programmer world yeah and the value could be this is programmer world this is programmer world okay and then i think once done then i can do apply which will put this into the shared preference so this will make sure that data is stored locally i'll show you where the and how the data is stored and how to delete in the uh, phone itself but let me first compute the other methods now to get it uh, to get the data what we have to do is we have to again uh, uh, yeah, we will create a local variable to that method using in the private mode and then we can retrieve the data in local variable so i will create local variable say from the string uh, uh, probably shared products for user data it's a uh, little long name i have taken but uh, i just wanted to make sure to show how we should take it and to avoid any kind of uh, confusion so here get a string and <clears throat> over here the first input will be it should be the name should be exactly the same whatever we have typed here so uh, yeah so better to copy paste and then the second argument will be the default so in case this value is not available this data is not available then what should be the uh, value here so probably i can do one thing i will just do like this like it should be i am not printing null or probably i can do I can print that also no problem uh, I will take this value as a null over here similarly I will do for the second variable so I will just change its name as uh, programmer keyword just for short and again I will copy because I will not take the chance and I will keep it as null only if the data doesn't exist then make it probably null over here and now I will print this in our text view over here. So what I can do is first I'll do a check whether any of this data is null or not. So if this equals to null and say for example if the second variable is also equals to null then of course there is no data then probably in our text view we should print set text uh, shared preference variables do not exist okay and else 
I think it's print uh, data. So what you can do is text view, set text, and here I'll print one by one. So most likely, uh, let me first print the uh, print one variable which is programmer world, and then I'll probably give a new line here, and then print the second variable which is user data. So it will print whatever the user enters in the text box. It will print that also uh, in the second line. So that's all from the <coughs> retrieval perspective. Now I'll put something for the delete uh, method. So over here, what I'll do is I'll again create this. I think I'll need this for both. So I'll just put it like this. So it should be a local variable. And yeah, once the shared preference is created, so in delete all the method is pretty simple. What we can do is we can go in the edit mode, and then there is some command called. Trigger and then we can either apply or commit. Yeah, so this trigger, if you notice, we have also used here in the line number 31. But what we are doing is after this, we are again putting it uh, immediately the values, so that's why we can't see the effect of this. So, just to show the effect of this clear command, I'm putting it in a separate method which I would like to show that it will delete or clear all the variables uh, in the database. I'll also do one thing, I'll just Remove a particular uh, variable. So for that, you have to use this remove with a string s is nothing but the uh, variable name in the string preference. So probably I will uh, delete the user data. I leave my programmable data as it is, and then once we have removed it, we can probably do a commit over here. So I think I can just put remove a specific uh, variable. And this one removes all the variables. So I just remove all the variables, all the shared variables, shared preference variables, and this one removes a specific shared preference variables. Okay, so that's all. I'll rerun it. In the meantime, I'll just bring it control X. Control V. Yeah, so on the right hand side, the app has come up. Let me make it a little bigger, the emulator. So, right now, of course, it's empty. If you try to get, I think I'm, I was expecting this uh, to be printed line number 45 that share preference variables are not, do not exist. Okay, if I do delete all or delete, it won't matter much. And if I put something, say, for example, test. Um, and click put of course i could have given some toast or something to show whether it's successful or not but uh, if you notice it's saying this is programmable test okay i think i could have made uh, this text box uh text widget a bit uh, wider so that it's pretty you can accommodate the things anyway and i'll read on the code and yeah if you notice i have already put a uh, text which is going into shared preference i'm rerunning the app and if I do a get, uh, it will fetch the previous data because that's the beauty of shared preference. It stores the data across the running of the app. Even if you, in fact, even if you uninstall the app without deleting the local data of that app, that data will be stored or saved. I'll show you how to get it. Go to your uh, icon of the app. So I brought the icon on the uh, top part. I'll just move it here like this and then uh, you should go to the app info and in this app info you'll see in the storage and cache it depends upon your version of the android this is the latest version so in that in this uh, if you go uh, you'll see here cache data and user data user data so that's where this shared preference value gets saved in the user data so to clean or to delete this you should clear the cache clear the storage of course, it will ask for the confirmation that do you really want to delete all your user data and you should say yes, of course. And once you do that, and uh, uh, I could have run from here also. And now if I do a get, it will return that no value exists because we have deleted our data. And that's why that test doesn't, didn't come up. But yeah, uh, if otherwise the data always gets saved in those in the app info. That's how you can retrieve. We'll do some other uh, experiments. So, say for example, uh, this is 
fantastic so i'm just putting some other text i'm doing a retrieve which says that this is programmable no i'll do delete only uh, okay first yeah first let me do delete which is just delete a uh, one particular uh, variable which is string user data so the programmable data will still be there so let me see how it happens and now if i do get so if you notice it changed this is programmable is still there but the second variable output has changed to null over here and uh, if i do delete all then i am expecting that first variable will also get deleted and it says shared preference variable do not exist if i do put uh, of course in this in the put method itself i am defining both the variables so in one put all both the variables gets defined so if i do get it gets saved here so that's all i wanted to show you i'll just quickly do a recap that the data of the shared preference gets saved in the uh, as a app data in the and how you can go and check is in the app info in this uh, user data is where it gets saved you can't of course see it from here but if you have to remove it you can remove it from here as well using this clear storage option uh, or otherwise you can uh, implement the method like uh, delete or delete all to do the same so that's all uh, i wanted to show you uh, that uh, how easy or simple it is uh, even if you close this app and rerun those data is still there and you just click get and it will return whatever the data was stored so i hope this video is useful uh, to you if you have any questions or suggestions then please put in the comment section below and if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching and have a nice day bye